This device is designed to convert waves into energy. And we're not just talking about enough energy to power a boogie board. Waves like this could generate enough electricity to power every U.S. household twice over. It's vast. The amount of energy stored in the waves is it's huge, it's enormous. Wave energy conversion is, hey, there's all this free power out there, how can we tap into it? And we do need to tap into it. The global demand for energy will nearly double in the next 30 years. And the only way to meet that demand is to diversify our energy sources. The key to resiliency is diversity. The more diverse the amount of energy inputs, the more resilient the grid is going to be. The bad news is that it's very difficult to capture that energy. The ocean is a violent place and thus very difficult to come up with equipment that can survive in those conditions. But today, a record number of companies and universities are setting their sights on making a wave energy device that is cost effective, efficient, and can take a battering from the ocean. What we're seeing now is that there's just enough of a drive for all forms of renewable energy that even the ones that are kind of hard, we need to go after. So that's what we're doing. This is Just Might Work, a show about surprising solutions to our biggest problems. Anybody looking at it, the waves coming to shore and certainly swimming and surfing on them understand there's a, a lot of energy in there. The challenge is how to capture that wave energy and turn it into a useful energy, such as electricity. Hey, thanks for the ride, Jason. Really appreciate this. Not a problem. Here to help. My name is Nate Sinclair. I work for the U.S. Navy. I've done lots of project work over the years for the Navy, and currently I'm leading the project for developing wave energy technologies. We're located just offshore of the Marine Corps base, so it, it's a great location, not only for, for the wave energy, but it's a, a controlled environment. Sinclair is in Oahu, visiting Marine Corps Base Hawaii. Here, at a facility called WETS, the Navy operates a kind of clearinghouse for anybody working on harnessing waves for energy. Wave energy converters from all over the world come to WETS to test and gauge whether their designs can turn into viable products. All right, do I, does that mean I get to clack it? WETS is an acronym, stands for the Wave Energy Test Site. We, the Navy, are operating and maintaining a, a test site for others to come in and learn more, demonstrate more about their technology to, to accelerate getting to a commercial result. Developing wave energy might not sound like your typical military operation, but the U.S. Navy is eager for ways to more effectively fuel its forces in the Pacific Ocean. If this tech is proven here, it could one day be a model for what wave energy could do everywhere else. Wave energy is a resource that someday could provide power to grids. The key is to develop technologies that policymakers or populations can agree that this is the best mix of technologies to fit our particular needs. WETS is the first grid-connected site in the U.S., one of very few in the world. And the energy generated out on the water is measured through this very mysterious cliffside World War II bunker. And this room is connected to the cable at the 30 meter berth. And so that wave energy device you know, sends its power to shore and then it, it uh, gets cleaned up here and put into the, the base grid. We have a lot of access into the data from these tests and are kind of the honest brokers, how well they're operating. For wave energy developers, it's a really tough road Unlike with windmills or solar panels, so far there isn't just one superior kind of wave energy device that's been successful. The ocean is unpredictable and violent, and capturing that energy efficiently is no easy task. The reason we're interested in the ocean is because it's energetic, but that also presents challenges. There's almost as many types of wave energy converters as, as there are engineers. Pat Cross is a researcher from the University of Hawaii, working alongside the Navy at WETS. And he's seen a wave energy device of every size and shape come through the test site. It's early days, and everyone is trying out wildly different ideas. With wave energy, there's what we call a power matrix, which depends on both wave height and wave period. In a regime where you have long period wave swells, one wave energy converter might be well suited to that. In a regime where you've got a lot of shorter period waves, you might be thinking of a different approach. 
Bringing a wave energy device to wets is the ultimate test. And devices don't just go straight from ideation to the open ocean. Before they get there, devices and their creators first travel to a place like this. And this is the Hinsdale Wave Research Lab. And it is used by researchers all over the country, including us. Pretty much all wave energy converters start in, in people's heads. But then a typical path is to take that concept and prototype that concept. Actually build it, scaled down, and test it in a facility like this. And the wave regime that you can hit it with is similarly scaled down. Here, Cross and his team have complete control over the scale and intensity of generated waves. They've come here to test a new design of their own. So how many more runs at this wave height? Four runs at 30 centimeters. Okay. There's a few prominent types of wave energy converters. We're testing a flap type wave energy converter, which is essentially a flap deployed in the near shore, taking advantage of the fairly constant direction of the waves close to a beach. I'm happy because we're getting extremely valuable data. The flap is behaving roughly as we expect, although we're seeing a little bit more motion in response to the waves than we expected. We're really trying to see that ah, the behavior was a little bit different in this period of wave. So that's what this project is all about, is to conclude with a prediction of how a full-scale version of the device would perform. My hope for the future is that we have meaningful contribution to coastal power grids. The initial use cases would be the areas where electricity is more expensive remote communities where diesel fuel needs to be shipped or flown in. The Navy has uses, whether it's bringing power to shore for more resilient base utility power, or offshore persistent surveillance or, or communications, charging of autonomous underwater vehicles. One application that we're exploring with the Navy is using a wave energy converter as an autonomous undersea vehicle, AUV, docking and charging station. Imagine a, an autonomous vehicle that can swim around and collect ocean data and then come back in to receive a recharge to its batteries. You have the potential to just vastly expand your ability to observe the oceans if you have power at sea. For a long, long time, we've known lots and lots about outer space, but we've invested very little in understanding our oceans. Having a wave energy conversion capability for generating power out in, in remote parts of the ocean may be very timely now that the oceans are getting more attention. There's so much need for, for clean energy in the world. It's, it's the motivator. It's what keeps us moving forward. <laughs>